All right, there's something I have to show you. This here is a graph representing the trend in IQ levels over the past 50 years in Denmark. And as you'd expect from 1950, IQ scores have been increasing. That could be thanks to technological advancements and just better education across the board. Like, it makes sense until about here in the late 90s, when IQ scores basically stopped increasing as much as they used to. In fact, they actually went down around this time period. Now, I remember when I first saw this graph, I was thinking, oh, maybe it's just a blip. Until I did a bit more research and I started to find that this same trend can be found in other countries as well. And I was like, damn, like, damn. I found it pretty interesting and you might too. So today we're going to talk about intelligence. It's the driving force behind a lot of the greatest aspects of humanity, but also the same driving force behind some of the terrors of humanity. And that's why I find this graph so important. So what does this decline mean? How does it affect us? Is the future of humanity doomed? Does this graph even mean anything? Well, join me as I try and answer this question. So get comfortable, grab some popcorn, and let's get on with it. ...that offers the chance to know your cat's IQ. Thank God for the IQ test. Without it, we wouldn't have a definitive way to be judgmental about I'm a cancer people. biology scientist. I work in a biotech company. What is your IQ? Yeah, I just don't, like, care for the score. Do tomorrow night. Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Whilst looking up information for this video, I ran into various different pieces of information and it seems that this question has come up quite a lot in research articles and a lot of scientists have a hard time coming to terms with what this could mean but there are a few highly likely reasons that could result to this but before we explain these i think it's important to outline what intelligence even is in the first place Intelligence sums up the complex process of collecting, storing, understanding, and utilizing information. It's what helps us to function on a day-to-day -day basis, and the way we utilize these skills that we get from intelligence is what differentiates us from other animals. Intelligence can be split into two categories, crystallized and fluid. Crystallized intelligence comes from stuff that you've been taught and trained in, whilst fluid intelligence encompasses your ability to see new patterns and use logic to solve novel problems. The word IQ is short for intelligence quotient and was first developed by a German psychologist called William Stern in the early 1900s. This term was then developed by Alfred Binet and Theodore Simon who went on to create the first modern IQ test called the Binet-Simon Intelligence Scale and this served as the common derivative for most modern IQ tests. Alright, that aside, let's talk about this graph. Now the increase that you see at the start of the graph is a result of something called the Flynn effect. And that just encompasses like the way the humans get smarter as years go on. And this can be due to a large variety of factors. One of which is education. The education. The education. The education. The education system in so many countries have seen a large shift over the past few decades. Schools cultivate an environment where people can challenge themselves and also an area where people can improve their test taking skills and their clinical thinking skills, a lot of which are correlated with higher IQ scores. Nutrition is also another factor. Food is a lot more available nowadays than it was ever before. And because of that, it's a lot easier for people to meet their nutritional demands. And meeting these nutritional demands help to prevent people from suffering from various nutritional deficiencies that are associated with decreased cognitive performance. Employment is also another important factor. There are a lot more people nowadays working more highly cognitively demanding jobs than there were ever before. Healthcare is also another factor that's caused this increase. The prevention of infectious diseases and various other conditions allow the body to use the energy that would have otherwise been used to fight these conditions to be used to develop the brain. And lastly, we have media. Now, I know social media and media has gone a very bad rap over the past few years, but you cannot argue the usefulness it has brought to the human race. Even if you think about the last time you used TikTok, for example, there's so many people sharing new ideas and new life hacks and so on, and you can literally run through hundreds of different topics in the space of a few minutes nowadays thanks to technology it's crazy and this media gives people the ability to expose themselves to new topics that they would have otherwise never seen in their life and exposure is such a big thing when it comes to intelligence if i showed you a picture of the mona lisa and i showed you a photorealistic painting from just a few days ago and I asked you what the difference between them is what would you say the answer is context now, even though this painting is absolutely amazing, like I probably wouldn't be able to draw this at all, even if I tried. It was drawn in a world where resources are all around us. Like there's so many resources available for someone to go and learn how to draw, which has raised the bar 
to the point where even someone with very little artistic talent could draw something that's borderline impressive. And this is compared to the Mona Lisa, which was drawn in a time where all these resources weren't available. And it's this reason why Leonardo's paintings sell for millions. And the same principle can be brought back towards intelligence. All right, so now that we know how this increase in IQ happened, let's look at this plateau. So when looking at the causes behind this plateau, there are two main camps of discussion, genetics and the environment. And this differentiation is very important because it helps to understand what the cause behind this plateau could be. Now, when it comes to genetics, there are two main points of discussion, one of which being that intelligent people tend to have less children. Now, intelligent people generally follow a, like a wide variety of trends, like intelligent people are more likely to take drugs, they're more likely to be nocturnal, they're less likely to be involved in crime. And another one of these trends is that they're less likely to have children. And one of the reasons behind this is that a lot of people tend to choose to have children later on in their careers or choose not to have any children at all. And this can be seen especially in women where every 15 point increase in IQ reduces a woman's odds of having children by 21 to 25%. This is important because genetics, as we all know, is linked to intelligence. And if less and less people carrying these genes are born, we may end up in a world in which the average IQ shifts towards those who do choose to have children. I found this really cool short story when I was researching this topic called The Marching Moron, like in which the main character found himself in a situation where like the average IQ of the world became like 45, but there were still a few people who had like above 100 IQ. And it just presented a very interesting situation because those with high IQs basically had to manage the world. It was a really interesting read and I do recommend it for anybody who is interested. There's also a bit of research being done into how immigrants affect the average IQ of a country. And like this is a topic that I don't really want to get into much discussion about because it's a very touchy subject and I don't think I'm a great person to start talking about politics here. But research has been done that have shown differences in IQ between local people and immigrants. And this was all started by a guy called Jason Richwine, who basically wrote the paper to inform the government that they were losing trillions of dollars by letting immigrants into the country. There are real differences between groups, not just trivial ones that we happen to notice uh, more than we should. Uh, races differ in all sorts of, of ways, and uh, probably the most important way is in IQ. And this was an example of how people just like to use IQ to compare themselves and give themselves a sense of superiority. It's very strange. All right, so Editor Dami here, and I just realized that I didn't explain this as well as I should have. So just to elaborate, it's not that I don't think that this topic should be discussed a bit more. I feel like it should be researched a lot more. But it's just we need to be very, very careful about the subject topic because it has the potential to lead to very superioristic views over basis that shouldn't really matter when valuing a human being. But I do think this is a very interesting topic to look into. The thing is, like all these genetic factors ended up being disproved because this same trend and plateau and dip in IQ was also found among siblings as well. This just means that when they observed siblings who generally don't really differ in genetics by that much, except for a few exceptions, they found consistently that the older sibling generally had a higher IQ score than the younger sibling. Like in other words, the person born earlier had a higher IQ score than the person born later. And this means that we have to stop looking at genetics and start to look at what the older sibling does that the younger sibling doesn't or what the younger sibling does that the older sibling doesn't. And as the oldest sibling myself reading this article, I concur. And because of that, we need to look at environmental reasons. And when we're looking at environmental reasons, we just need to flip the Flynn effect upside down. So when looking at education, we have to look at how some schools just aren't engaging or stimulating enough. When we're looking at nutrition, we're looking at how even though we have a lot more food available, sometimes this food is over processed to the point where we're not getting as much nutrient from them as we should. And also the fact that there are a lot of stuff added to them which are detrimental to our health and our cognitive performance. Also, even though social media does benefit us in terms of exposure, it also really messes with our brains. First of all, it absolutely wrecks our attention span, mainly because it's so easy to access. And this ease of access allows it to distract us from doing other things that are a lot more important or productive. Social media also messes with your reward pathway, mainly because little bits of dopamine are released whenever you like a photo or get a message off a friend or you're watching like an engaging YouTube video. And sometimes your brain confuses these hits of dopamine with other natural inducers of dopamine release, such as exercising or actually achieving some goals. Like studies have shown that the brain scans of people who use social media heavily are very similar to brain scans of people who gamble or take drugs. 
And then lastly, a message with your memory. A lot of us take photos nowadays and a lot of us use social media to store and share our photos. And as a result of that, we put the memory of those events into the hands of our phone, which moves the responsibility from our brains to our phones. And as a result, our brains work less to remember these moments because social media or our phones do it for us. There was a study that was carried out that proved this exact thing where they got a group of individuals to share and record their experiences and they got another group to not share and record these experiences. And it was found that those who didn't share and record these experiences remembered a lot more of their moments compared to the other group. And all of these reasons have kind of been put forward as an explanation behind this plateau. Even though we have a lot of factors that do encourage an increase in intelligence, we do have factors that slow it down. And this is what could have caused this plateau. But before we actually get to a definite conclusion, a lot more research has to be done, which is what I'm looking forward to. The thing is, this plateau might just be a little decrease before it starts increasing again. We never know. Now the important question is, does any of this even matter? Like why did I bother to sit down and spend hours making a video on this plateau in intelligence? The thing is, I'm a nerd and I'm absolutely obsessed with seeing new innovations. And one of the main conduits for new innovation is intelligence. And something like this, this plateau, it worries me because it kind of almost hints at the fact that I might not see as many innovations that I would like to in my lifetime. There's a book I read a while ago called The Tree Body Problem. And in this book, there's a completely different civilization. And this civilization has cultivated the ability to like take apart protons and like dissect them and engineer them and put them back together again. And while I was reading this, I was like, this would be pretty cool. Like it would be really cool if we had teleporters or flying cars or really advanced medicine or like really powerful technology. But whilst I think of this, I also have to think of the other side as well. A lot of times, intelligence has caused humans to fly a bit too close to the sun and like icarus we have been burned way more than once as history has shown so maybe this plateau isn't such a bad thing after all maybe this plateau is the one thing stopping us from absolutely diving straight into the sun